Hello, in this video I'm going to show you yet another example of how the principle of conservation of energy can be used to solve a problem very quickly. We have a ball, mass M, at a height H above a massless spring. The ball is going to drop onto the spring and ends up compressing the spring. We are interested in finding the maximum compression of the spring. As usual, we need to identify the before and the after instance if we want to apply PCOE. So the before instance should be the instance when the ball is dropped and the after instance is when the spring is at its maximum compression. So between these two instances, the ball has dropped through a vertical height so there's a loss in GPE of M. Between these two instances, the spring has also become compressed so there's a gain in elastic potential energy. Without any external force doing work on this system, the total energy of the system should be the same that allows us to equate the losses to the gains. Wait, what about the kinetic energy? Well, at the instant when the ball was dropped, its speed was of course zero. At the instant when the spring is most compressed, the ball is also at rest. This because as long as the ball is still moving downward, the spring should become more compressed. So the instant when it is at its maximum compression is when the ball has already come to rest and after this instant, the ball is actually on the way back up and the spring is going to begin to uncompress. So really there's no change in K between this instant and this instant and that's why kinetic energy does not feature in this equation here. Most students should be able to write half Kx squared as the gain in elastic potential energy. What's more tricky is the loss in GPE. The ball is going to drop through a total vertical distance of H plus X between these two instances. Huh? So the loss in GPE should be written as mg h plus x. I would like to highlight to you how the PCOE has allowed us to solve this problem so quickly. If we had tried to solve this problem using equations of motion and Newton's laws, then we would have to solve this problem in two parts. The first part is when the ball free falls from here to here, so that's a uniform acceleration motion with constant acceleration g. The second part is from the instant when the ball touches the spring to when the spring is at its maximum compression. And this motion doesn't have a constant acceleration because the net force is not constant because the spring force is not constant. So whenever possible, use the principle of conservation of energy approach. Power! Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!